is that they don't know too. <laughs> so I want you to really welcome David because he's a wonderful person. Oh, cool. Welcome and blessings to all of you. Wow, I, I have to tell you, thank you. Thank you for that. And then thank you for inviting me. You all have a gorgeous facility. Give yourselves a round of applause. Wow, I'm impressed. I came over here early this morning and uh, drove around a little bit and you got enough parking space. <laughs> uh, you'll have to go to two services and expand this out and et cetera with, to fill all the parking spaces. But then I went over and looked at, I guess at the river over there, saw the river. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming. Thank you for being here. My wife, Reverend Amy, has a saying about hell. And, and by the way, thank you for that song. Couldn't have been better. Did you choose that to go with the talk? Oh, you did? Thank you. She has a saying about hell. She says, it's okay to visit hell, but don't buy a couch. <laughs> So 2015 was one of those years that challenged me emotionally and spiritually. I had difficulty during that year in connecting and staying connected to my divine nature. I confess I was visiting hell, but I did manage not to buy a couch. But I confess, I went shopping numerous times. <laughs> We all experience difficulties. We all have years and time periods that challenge us from time to time, right? Events and circumstances that rock us to our core, that take us off our feet, take us out of that sense of equilibrium and sense of well-being. During 2015, my favorite mantra was on my heart and often on my lips. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Say it with me. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. We each affirm the truth and the presence of God in each and every circumstance. We each choose how we're going to walk through it, how we're going to behave, how we're going to outpicture the expression of God. Will we spend our time moving our thinking into higher consciousness? or? Will we allow our thinking to spiral downward into negative thinking, hell? So what happened that year? What happened in 2015? For one, my 40-year-old stepson, Eric, moved in with his 95-pound Catahoula, if you know what that is, that's a dog, big dog. His name is Jaeger. And Jaeger, yes, his name is after the beer, for those of you who are familiar with it. It's not that I don't like dogs. We have three of our own. Bentley, 18 pounds. Teddy, 12 pounds. Petey, 10 pounds. You get the gist, little dogs. They're also of the variety that doesn't shed, and they're non-allergenic. Jaeger, 95 pound dogs of shed and my eyes water and my nose run but we've worked out our relationship it's uh, if you've ever seen you, any of you have more than one dog okay and you know that there's a pecking order right right so it's, it's a really funny sight to see a 95-pound dog roll over and have a 10-pound dog put him in submission. <laughs> 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 
Well, Eric and Jaeger are by invitation to our home. And the adjustment has been, let us say, difficult over the past year. But we have made those adjustments. Jaeger has done that with a great deal of success. Eric is still in that process. <laughs> it's in the aggravations of everyday, everyday life that one loses your spiritual center. At least it is for me. It was around this time that Jaeger and Eric moved in that I began having to make several trips to Kentucky. Now, my, my mother had developed Alzheimer's and was in the process of her decline. And I have to tell you, um, it was hard. My brother and my sister, my, my brother is my younger brother, and he is a missionary in Seoul South, well, in, in Jeju Island, which is farthest south as you can get in South Korea. My sister lives in Atlanta. And so we were all making different trips. My brother could only come every two years, so we gave him the worst of the jobs. <laughs> but, like, he was the one that told her she couldn't drive any longer. <laughs> that was not a happy day. Now I have to tell you, several months after my mother was buried, that my younger brother John, now he was athletic, he ate just very well, he never smoked, didn't drink, and on his visit here every two years, his wife Jean would insist on him getting an exam. And during that exam, they found that he had an aortic aneurysm that had begun to affect his heart valve. So surgery was required. Unfortunately, two months after his surgery, which seemed to be very successful, he died of a heart infection after the surgery. Now, my brother's death was made much more difficult by the fact that he believed that I was going to hell. I was not saved. I, he even had difficulty in praying with me. He prayed for me, I know that for sure. But I also know he loved me, or he wouldn't have worried. I always thought we would have an opportunity in a moment in our lives as we got older to make amends, so to speak, because we didn't speak very often. At least come to a place of agreeing to disagree. Again, I told you that my sister and my brother and I worked flawlessly together. There was no conflict. It was one of the most beautiful things to see God working through three different people, a variety of religious concepts and ideas, come together and focus on one positive thing in taking care of my mother. Now, it was shortly after that, I had gone to Virginia and, had my, and buried my brother, saw most of the family. I came home. And a very, very dear friend of ours, who happened to be the administrator of Unity of Sarasota, discovered he had to have part of his lung removed because of cancer. Everything went well. The heart, the lung expanded out finally. It was a little slow, expanded out. And he was getting ready to be released that day. Boom. Heart attack. He coded, and he died. So all this occurred in about a six to eight month time period. God is present in each and every circumstance. The more challenging the circumstance, the greater the lesson, and the greater the focus on seeing the highest and best for each of us. 
in those circumstances. I rely on my chaplains to hold sacred space for me during these difficult times. And I understand that you all are getting ready to put together a chaplain program. I highly recommend it, it's great. And you'll be able to go with them. And their main purpose is to hold the high line for you when you have difficulty in seeing it for yourself. So I was brought up a Baptist. And I know there's many varieties of background and traditions in this room. But I was brought up a Baptist. And so with that, we fully understand the foundation of faith. This is my rock. This is what I stand on. We each have that. Sometimes it shifts from day to day, but we have that. You know of their commitment to serve God and their community. We each could do well to emulate some of those practices and those qualities. Baptists with their beliefs would have no difficulty in understanding this next story. St. Peter and Satan were having an argument one day about baseball. It's that time of year. Satan proposed a game to be played on neutral grounds from a select team of the heavenly host and his own hand-picked boys. Very well, said the gatekeeper of heaven. But you realize I've got all the great players and I have the best coaches. Satan seemed unperturbed and he says, I understand. Loving God condemns someone to a place like hell. Not for a week or two as a punishment, for eternity. The disservice of teaching heaven up there and hell down here is that it becomes an after-death experience. Some of us, unknowingly, still cling part of this tradition. Heaven and hell are not places. They are not destinations. It's not a retreat you go to when you're done with this bodily form. You are in heaven right now. And it only is your thinking that takes you away from it in any given moment. I'm not sure this is a news flash to you, but it was a shock to my system. As a Baptist, it was ingrained in me that there is a place called hell, and you better not go there, and there was a place called heaven. And I didn't really find the description all that appealing. So if heaven and hell are not places, what are they? They're very simply states of consciousness. Heaven is a state of consciousness in harmony with the thoughts of God. Heaven is everywhere present. Let me say that again. Heaven is a place in our spiritual thinking where we already dwell and hell is simply represents an opportunity to learn and change our thinking. Now my brain still does a double take when I say that even today. I mean that old Baptist thinking just is hard to completely get rid of. But let me share this that has been on my heart for the past several years that I've really been working with. We somewhat 
aggrandize the idea of heaven or that state of oneness with God. We tend to want it to be this blissful state, almost nirvana-like. Making heaven just, just out of reach. Finding it in the silence or in a great meditation time. I'm not knocking those experiences, they're important. But I function better thinking of heaven as a state of being open to the presence of spirit at any given time, any given circumstance, on any ordinary day, doing everyday ordinary things. It's not just when I'm here at church. It's not just in my quiet time. It's not when I'm reading scripture. It's every moment of the day. For me, hell is the place I go to to justify my feelings of anger, insult, depression, or any other negative condition. I'm sure each of you have your own stories, your own challenges. We each create our experiences by the activity of our thinking. When we see ourselves as the creator of our world, then we are in a place of power to choose. Hell is only our thoughts and only as real as we want them to be. Now that's a frightening thought. How real do you want your negative thinking to be? What do you want to manifest? How real do you want your judgment of another to be? What do you want to manifest in your life? Do you want to move to your higher thinking, spiraling upward or downward? As people, human beings, we have many emotions. Heaven is not void of negative emotions. Emotions are a part of the flavor of life. For example, I could have wallowed in grief, but I can't go there. We can't let our emotions, our thoughts, that aren't positive, overtake our lives. So I would like to close with a part of a commencement speech by Liam Bergen from May 17th of 2015. He was speaking to the graduates of Boston College. The speaker encouraged the graduates to find God in all things. To have that look in your eyes that senses the heart of things. Not just the peripheral of the surface, but to see deep down. To recognize the presence of God, to sense God, think of the senses. Seeing, hearing, smelling, touching, and tasting. To see God not just in the wonder of creation, in the mountains and the seas, in people and events that are good and beautiful. But to see, too, see God, too, in the poor, the broken, the ugly, and the disfigured. To hear God not just in the choir, or music, or in words of love, but to hear God, too, in the discord, in anger, and in conflict. To smell God not just in the scent of a rose or the perfume of your spouse, but to smell God, too, in the stench of a baby's diaper or in the pungent odor of sickness and ill health. 
to touch God, not just in the caress of a loved one, but to touch God too in a body broken next to death. To taste God, not just in the communion suite or on the lips of the beloved, but to taste God too in the salty tears of disappointment and heartbreak. Wise advice for those, not those graduates, but also for us who seek to walk the talk of oneness that each of us are seeking. I believe I always have been and always will be, just in a different form. While we are in our present form, how that divine energy expresses, or doesn't, is up to us. Heaven is here and now. It's not always pretty. As you join with the creative force we call God, you have far more power to create a loving, compassionate world for yourselves. Armed with the knowledge, God is at work in every circumstance, in every condition. We can face those difficult circumstances and ask the question, where do I want to stand? Heaven or hell? Namaste.